You know, I was thinking about you the other night because I went out to dinner with um, some of my very close friends in New York, and these are all Manhattan liberals, and um, we were talking about the Oxford shooting. You know, this kid in Michigan, this 15-year-old who um, brought a gun to school, and there had definitely been warning signs that were missed or ignored, and now his parents have been charged with involuntary manslaughter, and he's facing four murder counts and others. Uh, the school's already been sued for $100 million, and on it goes. And one of the things that people are saying in the wake of that is we need a gun storage mandate, a law in Michigan where there wasn't one. And that might have stopped this tragedy from happening. And I'll tell you, look, unlike you, I'm not an expert when it comes to gun laws or even guns. I understand both sides. I'm the mother of three kids. I'm much more worried about their safety, you know, than I am about anything else. And every time one of these comes up, I say to myself, let's put it all on the table. Let's great. Let's do look at all of it. Show me the reform that would have prevented this shooting. And I will go march in the streets for it. I don't care who gets mad at me. NRA, I don't care. But to be honest, I haven't yet seen the one. You know, I just the ones that get proposed in the wake of these shootings just seem like comfort measures that wouldn't have prevented this shooting. And that's right. kind of what I'm seeing with Oxford. But when I read your piece um, posted, where was it? It was on uh, Real Clear Politics, why gun storage laws would do more harm than good. I was like, oh, my gosh, this has got all the answers in it. And I wanted my New York liberal friends to hear your answers. So I'm going to forward this segment to them. But let's start there. The gun storage laws in Michigan and elsewhere. Why aren't those the answer to teenagers taking guns and shooting up people? Right. Well, uh I hope they're listening. But uh, what I can say is I think you're exactly right about the reaction after these just in general. I mean, the normal law that keeps on getting pushed after mass public shootings is uh, background checks on the private transfers of guns. And usually the point I raise there is would it have mattered in the last case? Is there one mass public shooting this century that would have been stopped if such a law had been in effect? and been perfectly enforced? And the answer is no. But yet it's usually the first law that people keep on raising that we need to have to stop these attacks. And in this case, look, it's not even clear whether the gun was locked or not in the family's home. Uh, The parents claim that it was. I guess we'll find out later whether or not that was the case or not. But what we need to talk about a little bit are the costs and benefits of these types of laws that can be there. You know, in Michigan, uh, they average about less than two accidental gun deaths for kids under 18 in any given year over the last 20 years in the state. Uh, The main purpose of uh, gun lock laws is accidental deaths. I mean, as you are implying, referring to your kids, uh, you know, nationwide for children under 10, there's 35 accidental gun deaths. The vast majority of those, about two thirds of those, actually involve adults in their mid to late 20s who are firing the guns, uh, who have criminal records usually and are either drug addicts or alcoholics. And gun locks aren't going to stop those types of attacks when, in many cases, it's illegal for people to be owning these guns. and It's not going to stop an adult in any case. But the issue that you have is that there are trade-offs. To the extent it may reduce uh, these accidental gun deaths, you also have to take into account that people are going to find it more difficult to have access to guns to be able to go and protect themselves and their families. When you see these types of laws get passed, What you see is an increased breaking into people's homes when they're there. You see an increase in successful crimes. Gun locks make it more difficult for people to go and protect themselves and their families. And, uh, you know, we've had four since 19 or since 2000. We've had four mass public shootings involving schools, involving juveniles. We've had a couple others, the the. Parkland and uh, uh, Sandy Hook involving people who were over 18, uh, 19 in one case and 21 in the other case. Uh, you know, so, you know, I, my goal is to try to look at on net what saves lives. And while I understand 
the desire uh, for many of these types of laws, I worry that they're actually going to increase the number of deaths. What about the other argument I hear is the um, the mass carnage that can be inflicted so quickly with a gun? You know, that's reason enough to crack down on firearms. And, you know, certainly you mentioned anything like an AR-15, and that's the argument you'll get. What's the response to that? Well, surely guns make it easier to kill people, and it makes it easier to go and kill people quickly. Uh, you know, with the but guns also make it easier for people to protect themselves and prevent bad things from happening. You know, so people focus on the AR-15 that you mentioned. Uh, I think there's a lot of misnomers about what it is exactly, uh, you know, and surely things like entertainment television creates a lot of that misimpression. Over last year, if you look at ABC, CBS, NBC, and Fox, their police shows, about 80% of the time that criminals were using guns, uh, they're depicted as using machine guns, often being referred to as AR-15s in many segments. Mm. But you're talking about, in actuality, a semi-automatic rifle that fires the same bullets with the same rapidity, doing the same damage as any semi-automatic hunting rifle. Right. Now, if you want to go and ban all semi-automatic guns, I mean, just so people know, semi-automatic gun is one pull the trigger, one bullet comes out, it reloads itself, one pull the trigger, one bullet comes out, and so on. Uh, it's not a machine gun where if you hold your finger down, bullets will continue to come out as long as you have your finger depressed on it. Uh, the thing is, though, civilians benefit from having semi-automatic guns for self-defense. I mean, the alternative is a manually loaded gun where you have to physically put another bullet in the chamber yourself uh, after you after you fire. And, you know, if you're facing multiple uh, attackers or if you fire and you miss or if you fire and wound somebody, uh, you may not have the luxury of time to go and manually reload your gun at that point. And so, you know, uh, you have to go and take into account, you know, how often people use guns defensively uh, at the same time there. And unfortunately, a lot of the discussion there doesn't weigh both the costs and benefits of these things. 